Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another series review. Actually, this is the final episode of Season 4 of Downton Abbey. Um, I must say that I am just tickled pink at what uh, Jillian Fellows has done with this uh, final episode of Season 4 and quite a bit has come to pass. And um, of course in the episode prior to this, I had that sneaking suspicion that um, Bates had done something <laughs> rather criminal, which was actually proven in this particular final episode, and I thought, ah, fellows, you evil genius, I knew this was going to occur, why, because I really like Bates, and well, once a murderer, always a murderer, I guess. Um, well, he didn't really murder his, his wife anyway. She murdered herself. She committed suicide, but that's beside the point. Anyway, um, <clears throat> once a violent man, always a violent man, I suppose. But uh, Edith goes to Switzerland, and um, of course we know that she gives up the baby and gives her to a family that doesn't have children and um, she's going to go back to um, Switzerland to see if she can find Michael Gregson which I, I knew that was going to happen as well I think that's going to be in next season uh, Paul Giamatti was in this one and uh, so was Shirley MacLaine and I loved seeing Paul because the last thing that he had been in was uh, The Last Station which I absolutely adore it's uh, a movie I did a, a review here on here I think and basically it's about the final um, the final part of Leo Tolstoy's life and if you're interested in the man that Tolstoy was I definitely recommend it and it's absolutely glorious and it's also a tearjerker so I forewarn you but he he plays uh, a character who is uh, kind of a contemporary of his and a, a good comrade but anyway in this one he plays a typical American man and uh, <laughs> he actually asks um, <clears throat> Daisy to come along with him since he likes her food so much but it's there's more to it one of the the valet that he has with him actually is a little bit sweet on her and um, <laughs> instead of going with him she actually lets Ivy go with with him instead as a show of kindness but I know she had an ulterior motive because she's just going to America to see Arthur because Arthur has been accepted to the Ritz Carlton and this is the episode where we where we find that out I thought yay Arthur I was so happy for Arthur I still don't like Thomas very much and of course Baxter has Mosley stand up for her because she actually stood up for him and at, at first I wasn't sure that I really liked Baxter or if she had any redeeming quality of character at all I thought she has no integrity she's just going to be another O'Malley and uh, don't get me wrong I like O'Malley but O'Malley was a bit of a bitch um, she just was uh, manipulative and undermining and uh, she just always had her best interest in mind especially when Thomas was concerned because they were always in cahoots with each other trying to um, do whatever they could to make the situation come out in their favor I think this not so with Baxter and we find that she has uh, a friend in Mosley and it might be more than that I think it's a, a love interest and then of course we have another love interest and that's with um, Carson and uh, Mrs. Hughes and I thought I always had that feeling I just knew that something was going to happen between those two and I thought oh it was just so sweet I was so happy and that when they were walking out toward the sea in the very end and holding hands I wanted to cry because it was just so touching and, and beautiful that was my favorite scene from this entire episode um, 
I really don't have that much more to say about this particular episode other than it's my favorite of the entire season. And, um, of course, we might have a, a suitor for young Rose, and hopefully she doesn't mess it up. She had her own little fling with Mr. Ross of the bandstand, and um, she was definitely in, in, well, she was just doing so to be impetuous and no real reason other than that just she was being a brat and Ross it was interesting he actually showed that he had integrity because he said I cannot continue this relationship it was a prior episode I'm talking of I cannot continue this relationship because I love her and I don't want to see her destroyed and I don't want to uh, suffer mockery at the hands of my peers and uh, it was the 20 it's 1920 and of course there probably was still quite a bit of racial inequality at that time. Even in, in a most high society, um, that would have been looked upon as worse than having a child out of wedlock. So you keep hearing that uh, that exchange between Rosamond and Edith about that as well. And um, she doesn't want to give uh, the right of her child over. She's, she's in a conflict. And then she he fires back at Rosamond saying, well, you never had children. I thought, ooh, ugh, burn. But, yeah, she had that coming, actually. I, I thought, why can't you be more compassionate? And that's the reason why. She has never had a child. Um, there's quite a bit going on with this particular episode, I thought. And it just it left everything on a, on a happy note, I thought, with Carson and uh, Mrs. Hughes. But then again... You've got all these other <laughs> love triangles in the air, particularly with Mary. And I really want her to be with Tony. I want her to be with Tony. But um, I doubt that that's going to happen. I don't think that Julian Fellows is going to let that occur. I think he's probably going to let her be with uh, Mr. Blake. Either or, she probably be, would be better off with Blake because he knows more about uh, livestock. And he would, he would be more efficient in that area so it just makes more sense but I, either way I mean, it would look it would look very good for her and then she would have somebody to help her take care of a uh, baby as for um, Tom Branson with uh, Miss Bunting I want to see that come to a head too I just I think that they have a good relationship but he doesn't feel comfortable with her and when Thomas sees them uh, walking along the Grand Hall in the Overlook, uh, and they look down on uh, the splendor of the Abbey itself, um, he he pulls it all out of proportion in his favor again. Yeah, conniving little cheeky bastard, but he just, uh, he always does that. But <laughs> it's just something that he is very um, prone to do. Um other than that, I can't really say too much else about this particular episode other than I just absolutely loved it and it just it made me feel gleeful and joyous and very jocular at the end of the day and um it was a very splendid and entertaining episode as well and I'm looking forward to season 5 and I think they said there would be a season 6 they would probably uh uh, not continue it after season six, I think. That's something I read on Wikipedia, but you can't really trust everything you read on Wikipedia. But um, I don't know if Fellows had uh, commented on that or not, but we'll see if he has any press releases on this subject. But so far, we have a lot to look forward to, Downton Abbey watchers. <laughs>